Welcome back to the platform. I'm Michael Kazilny, and thank you very much for all those wonderful emails from all around the globe. Thank you very much. Love and best wishes to all. We've got the great man Togsy on the couch, um, filling in for Warwick. Where's Warwick on? Filling in on the big seat. Warwick is on the Gold Coast, sunning himself, Again. I believe. He played golf today. He's been pestering me with all these videos of him playing golf because he can't play at all. But uh, yeah, he's been having a good time up there. In fact, he actually sent us a message and uh, I think we should probably look at it. Warwick Kepa coming in from the Gold Coast. Commonwealth Ambassador Warwick Kepa is here and the Platform King and the Platform Guru. The same actually revolved around me at the night. Been going six weeks. Let's hope it goes 72. Uh, Cogs, you get out of my chair, mate. Had enough of that. Get out of King's chair. You heard of King Wally? No, you haven't. You heard of King Warwick Kepa, though. He goes to that opening of an envelope. Look like Rosie Posey. We love it. Sorry, I missed the big, um, the big release uh, party, but never mind. I haven't made you one in about three months, we'll do it again. We'll name it after me. This is Warwick Kepa for Warwick's work. And the platform coming to you live to the beautiful Gold Coast Ambassador and Commonwealth Games King, Warwick Kepa. You rip. Togsy looks like he's uh, had some cheap wine in a three day growth. I've never seen Cap, I mean, Cap with. Um, the Tony Montana sort of three-day growth. Yeah, he's having a lot of fun around the pool, I think, in um, typical Warwick fashion. He has a lot of holidays, doesn't he? He has a good life. And what have you been up to? Mate, just, uh, well, it's been busy, actually. You know, obviously putting together the show each week is uh, keeping me busy, and, and the stuff that I do or did in the past is very different to Warwick's. Um, if we're going to play a clip of Warwick right now, you'd probably be urinating in someone's garden or something <laughs> or getting Botox. But the stuff that I used to do around the world with my web show is very different. So I thought we'd play some of that tonight. Yeah, well, let's have a look. Well, one of the great things about traveling around the world by yourself with just a home video camera and a tripod is you never know who you'll meet from the streets, the cafes, everyone's got a great story to tell, especially someone like Kamal, someone who sold over 10 million records, had a number one hit around the world. Listen, please listen, said the elephant. If we want the world we know to stay alive, then man and beast we must work together, and together we will survive. Listen, said the elephant, it is conservation time. Yeah, such a unique voice which we saw in the great ads for Dilma. So it was great to sit with Kamal and ask him about his dreams. Did you hire one of the big halls in England on your own and do your own tour or something like that? Because that sounds like a pretty big dream. Well, I, that was in uh, London. Can you tell London, me about that? In 1975. Because I wanted uh, the agents in London to take notice of me. They wouldn't. So I said, if you don't do it, I'll do it myself. Because, you know, Roger Moore, the ex-James uh, Bond guy, his wife, Dorothy Squires, when her career was taking a dip, she went and hired the Palladium, did her own show. I said, a woman can do it. Surely a man can do it. It's not a small venue, though, is it? That's a really popular big venue. 2,000, 2,000 people. And uh, I had the Palladium and uh, promoted it. And uh, the story of it got to Europe. Within five weeks, I was flown to Europe to record a song called The Elephant Song, <laughs> the number one song in Europe for six weeks. Yeah, that's a dream. That's a big dream. Yeah, I didn't even dream about that. It just happened. No, it just happened. Right. Yeah. But it doesn't happen if you sit in your backside. You've got to get off your backside and, 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 and promote. Well, that was going to be my next question. Like, do you have advice for young people out there? And forgetting it's music or anything in life, what would you say to young people about getting out there and chasing dreams? I think you've got to have a fire in your belly. You know, if you really believe something, and if your mind and your heart says you can, you can. But if your mind says you can, your heart says it can't. Problem. You've got to coordinate your mind-heart coordination together. Then you have a, a cutting edge, and you can cut through anything. And then Another inspiring story is that of Roy Jones Jr., one of the greatest boxers to ever lace up the gloves. Only two men in history have won the middleweight title, then go on to win the heavyweight title. He was the best of his era, and uh, here's an example of that. Yeah, I'm from Atlanta, old 
Yeah, he was just such a hero of mine and I couldn't believe it. I was waiting for a flight to go to New York and uh, well, this is what happened. All right, so sitting here at LAX, um, having a bad night because my flight's been delayed, but then uh, one of my all-time heroes walks by, and that is the man I've always wanted to interview, actually, in boxing, which is Roy Jones Jr. Roy, how you doing? What's up, man? How you doing? <laughs> I'm good. Where are you flying to? I'm flying back home to Pensacola, Florida. Okay, so now, I ask a lot of people, man, about their dreams and stuff. Um, do you feel like you've lived your dream, or if not, what's the, like, the grand plan dream for you? No, I live my dream. Yeah? Over and over again, I mean, I never dreamed of becoming a heavyweight champion, and one night I did have a dream as a professional fighter to become a heavyweight champion, I did it. So, what else could I do? <laughs> was that like when you had that fight with John Ruiz, which I watched in Australia, man, that was just unbelievable. Like, was that just something like what age did that start for you when you thought? I mean, there's a great scene in the movie Raging Bull where they talk with Jake LaMotta saying, Man, he's Joe Lewis is a heavyweight, you're a middleweight, it's impossible. You proved that possible, like, yeah, I, I definitely proved that possible. And what happened was about um 1995 or 96, I just felt like, you know what, if you this good fight for the heavyweight title. And I started trying to get Holyfield to fight me, but he wouldn't fight me, so I waited until I finally got my opportunity and I took it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it was, was boxing something that you are always going to get into? I know your father trained you as a youngster and stuff. Boxing was always my dead love off the top. I just knew I could do it. And you've been in the Matrix? Yeah, I was in the Matrix too. I actually <laughs> shot down in Australia, yep. Do you think that like within, particularly what you've proved, that, that really anything's possible, right? Anything possible. You should never let nobody give you boundaries. Only God should give you boundaries. Right. Like if you're talking to young kids out there, and, and regardless if it's boxing or if it's just life in general, do you just agree that it's just hard work that's got you to where you are? I mean, obviously you're very talented, but you've, you work hard as well, don't you? Yeah, but off the top you got to have first faith in God, then faith in yourself. And if God bless you with the talent, then you got to take and work five times harder to get where you want to get because there are going to be some low spots, there are going to be bad spots for you waiting already, but you got to keep working hard, keep working hard to persevere and overcome when you get in those low spots. And with hard work, anything is possible. Nice, man. Well, i got to say that to sit here in an airport and have a bad night and then to have one of your heroes walk by is kind of nice. So, so uh, great to meet you. Uh, one of the greatest of all time. And thank you, man. Thank you, and I enjoy And thank you all, Australia, for always supporting me. Peace. Rock on. Togsy, you've done some amazing interviews around the world. And that beanie, thank you. you've um, had that for a long time. That beanie, I wonder what happened to it because it was a real cheap one. And I took it around the world and somewhere along the way I got lost. But, yeah, I missed that beanie. The best things in life are the simple things. That's and, right. And Kappa's on next week again. Mate, he's back in his chair. He can have it back. No <laughs> pressure on him. Thanks very much for um, being on the couch. Thanks, and uh, What a great job. And uh, uh, our next special guest, well, maybe our new uh, Lord Mayor of Melbourne. The great man Sam Newman will be joining us very shortly.